can see me. <laughs> I think you can. Okay, so I decided this is going to be a really, really good message. And this is going to be on agreement in the body of Christ. And just even if it's just with, you know, maybe a sister or a brother in Christ, just about agreement. And um, I'm going to share some things that I have learned personally and some errors that I've made <laughs> in my walk personally. I'm going to share that. And um, I'm going to talk about what agreement what people think agreement is and what agreement is not. Now, the main thing that I will use as an example, because it's just something common that you see, I feel like throughout the entire body of Christ, you're always going to see this. So it's two categories of Christians. You always, you always find this. One category is the Christians who I call them uh, the faith steppers. It's the people who step out on faith. They don't have any kind of leading from the Holy Spirit. They're not, um, they don't have any impression, any guidance. You know, they just kind of step out on faith. And I guess they hope that God meets them, meets them there. And um, then there's a second category of Christians that I've noticed where, which I'm on this side. <laughs> I don't like to go anywhere, pursue anything. I don't even to the finest, smallest detail of my life, unless God has specifically given me word on that particular matter. If God didn't tell me to go, he didn't tell me to do it or say it, and he didn't give me any type of leading or impression in my spirit, I don't move, period, point blank. So there's two categories of those Christians. And <clears throat> I do want to say this from what I've learned, because I haven't always done everything right. I've actually been on both sides. So it's really just a message to edify the body. Um, What I have noticed from my personal experience, I'm not going to say that either two are wrong. But I will say that both two are necessary in order to work in harmony with each other. Both are important. You do need to be led by the spirit in all things. The Bible says that the sons of God are led by the spirit of God. And you also have to step out on faith as well. Christians live by faith. You know, the Bible says the just shall walk by faith. So you have to do both, but you have to make sure that they are one and they're in alignment with each other. You can't do one without the other. <clears throat> so, um. One is seemingly works and the other is faith. I'm about to break that down. <laughs> now, you, you notice how I said that either one are not necessarily wrong. They're really not wrong. It's just like I said, they, they have to work together. So when you have somebody who's the, the faith stepper, they don't really pray about it. They don't. Um, I would say they may pray something like, OK, God, I'm about to do this. I'm about to make this move or I'm about to go ahead and uh apply to this job. And if it's your will, let me get it. And if it's not, don't let me get it. I've done that, <laughs> you know? So, but even still, I feel like, um, I feel like that could kind of be combined with the faith category as well, because you're putting faith in God's sovereignty that actually does work in the sense that, well, if he genuinely heard that prayer and if I, if I applied faith to what I asked him, if it really is not his will, he's not going to let me get it. A perfect example of that would be the job I wanted to get in June. <clears throat> y'all remember how I was saying I wanted to work at a, um, a sports bar <laughs> just to try something different I had never done waitressing before but I wanted to work at a sports bar and um, I prayed that because sometimes I just feel like why well, I sincerely and genuinely don't know if it could be a spirit holding me back and keeping me in isolation or maybe is God you know there's confusion with that so I would pray that and I still pray that way <clears throat> um well, God, I'm going to apply here. If you don't want me to work here, just don't give me the job. And um, I do believe that God answered that prayer. And that definitely was a prayer of faith and of sovereignty because I had an interview with that woman. She practically basically hired me. She just told me that she was going to give me a call. And when she did to just bring in my stuff and they were going to put me in the system. However, every time I would call back something would always just go wrong not necessarily wrong it's just like uh, i think first i spoke with a guy who may have been a head over her somewhere and um he's just like oh, okay i'll talk to her about that she hasn't really communicated that to me yet and we'll get back with you no call back <laughs> you know or i will call again you know so i pretty much waited for like a couple weeks and my cousin she works at hooters so which is kind of it's a sports bar arena it's not the same style or anything i wasn't gonna be wearing it like that but so she was just telling me, you know, she's been working in an environment like that. And she was like, okay, well, just kind of wait, you know, a few weeks. You know, it usually takes a couple weeks or whatever. I was like, okay. So 
And when God gives me jobs, I'm used to him just kind of literally just throwing it my way. That's how I know when it's him. <laughs> he just kind of gives it to me. So um, I pretty much just waiting on him. And I think it's pretty clear that he did answer that prayer. And it just goes to show that Christians can step out on faith, quote unquote, and just go somewhere. And if you were not, I'm going to say this. <sighs> It could happen. It could happen that you do end up working somewhere, going somewhere that was not God's will. And uh, he could allow it for whatever reason. But I also think that it's possible that you could also step out on that and go in that direction. But because you prayed that he would oversee it, he did intervene. So that shows you that Christians can actually go in another direction <laughs> that they have no business going. And um, I don't think it, it you know, takes the father off the throne. I don't think it really affects with his sovereignty. Nothing can affect with his sovereignty. It just means that he allowed it for whatever reason. So I do believe that because I prayed that prayer of faith, even though on my will, he didn't tell me to go apply there. <clears throat> um, that was Brandy's choice to go here. You know, my logic and my reason. Oh, I want to try something different. So I'm going to go over here. But because I prayed that prayer of faith for him to intervene just in case, I think he did honor that. <laughs> he did it. And obviously I'm not working there. So uh, I want to break down. To me, honestly, it's two different mindsets. The faith steppers, the ones who step out on faith, they don't, meaning they weren't led to do it. God didn't really give them any impression. They just, I call it self-will. Self-will, <laughs> I'm going to go here and do this versus category two, people who wait patiently on the Lord's voice. They wait, even if they got the word, honey, we be waiting for confirmation. Like, wait, what's the confirmation? <laughs> you know, which is good. It's good that you like that, you know. So um, I find it interesting how one is works. One is faith. And we know that wherever faith is, there's rest. And wherever there is work, there's labor, which the Bible tells you to cease from. Now, like I said, for the third time, I don't necessarily think that either two are wrong. I think they have to work together because the Bible says faith without works is dead. You can't have one without the other. You can't be led and have the faith from category two and have that mindset, but not move on it. And you can't be the one who was never led to do it, but just jumped out and did it anyway on behalf of faith. My personal definition of faith, I only apply faith to what God tells me to apply faith to. I think you can easily verge into occultic beliefs if you feel like that whatever you choose to do in this lifetime is God's will. You know, and uh, everything is uh, happens for a reason type thing. I don't believe in that crap. I believe in being led by the Holy Spirit 100%. I believe it's foolish because, you know, we still have to have our minds renewed. Some of us are still babes. We're still learning the Father. So I think it's very foolish that if we do just like to jump on on impulse and do certain things or apply here, or, you know, go this place or be with this person and God never told you to do that, that's an issue. And you can mess up your destiny doing stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> the Father doesn't stop you from doing it. He doesn't force you to do otherwise. He does intervene on your behalf. And I believe he does communicate to you in a way where you can understand that it's him speaking to you. And um, <clears throat> he gives you the opportunity to respond. He'll remind you, you're over here, but you need to be over here. But is he going to force you to do either one? He doesn't force you to do anything, but his hand is definitely there. You can see that. <laughs> so um, let's talk about the faith steppers, <laughs> the faith steppers. Um, I would say People like that are most likely ambitious. They, um, I don't think it's wise because it is self will. I, I don't really believe in doing something, you know, that's, that's really not Holy Spirit led. And, um, you'll find, um, they, they kind of lean more towards the works side of things. And, um, I've experienced this with a couple people that I fellowship with. Or, or I'll just say I've got counsel from different sisters in Christ when it came to like looking for a job because that's something I've always been genuinely confused about. I'm the type of person I don't like to move or do anything <laughs> unless God tells me, okay, Brandy, go here. Or I pray about it first and maybe he gives me a dream or some type of impression like that's the place, you know. Other than that, I, I don't move. And to category one, it may look like they may say something like, okay, well, God wants you to open the door. <laughs> you know, God wants you to kind of, you know, you take the first step and then heal. And I'm like, I don't know. That really sounds too right to me. But yeah, so you'll notice that they talk like that. That's that's their belief system. That's their current mindset where you have to 
open the door or walk out and, you know, move first. And then God will accompany you on that journey, <laughs> I guess. So um, it really popped out to me while I was thinking about it. So the people who step out on faith without really being led, without really having a word from the Lord first, there, there it seems that they're a little bit more lenient towards the works aspect of things. That could be a problem because the Bible tells us to cease from our labor, to cease from works, works righteousness, works anything I personally believe is not of God if it is separate from the faith. Like I said, they have to work together. You can't have category one believers doing their own thing. And then category two, just over here, like, as you see, there's no agreement, there's no harmony, but yet y'all are a part of the same body. So why do y'all have two different mindsets and ways of going about doing things? I'm gonna get on that in a few minutes. That's, that's talking about agreement and stuff. <clears throat> now, category two, I'm category two. When it comes to, um, the labor and the works mindset that the, the faith steppers have. I'm category two in the sense that I rest in God's sovereignty. Those who are wise and really waiting on a word from the Lord is very, very important. And like I said, it may sound like the other could be, you know, right too. I personally don't feel it is right because it just contradicts scripture. If the word is telling you that a believer is led by the spirit of God, that leads me to believe in it, especially since we're sheep. If you look up the nature of a sheep, sheep are very dumb. They're dumb animals. They need a shepherd. <laughs> so it doesn't make sense for you to be that one sheep in category one to just kind of trot off the uh, trot off the land and just go wherever you want to go and hoping that the shepherd's going to follow you there and it's going to be his will. That That's a lot of people who they want to do what they want to do. They don't really say it's God's will. They hope it's God's will. They walk out and step out on it. They go ahead and date that person, marry this person, and expect for God to bless it. They expect for God to bless that career path that they chose. When they never got any confirmation from God, they never checked with him to see whether that was even his uh, their destiny, his destiny for that person, or his will for them to be there in that season. Even, yeah, even if it was God's will for you to be there, there's different times and seasons for that. Everything's not meant to be a right now thing. So, um, <clears throat> yes, yeah, so I did. I find it interesting that they're, they're more lenient towards works and, um, there's error in that there's error in operating that way. It doesn't mean that God can't intervene and save you, <laughs> it, it, but you do need to stop doing that. I think because you are a sheep, you should understand what the nature of a sheep really is. Like I said, they're dumb animals. They can't lead themselves which is why it's foolish for a believer to act on impulse that way and assume that just because they have the Holy Spirit or they know his voice, well, if God wants to stop it, he'll stop it. He may not always stop it. Maybe he'll let you do it just to teach you something, you know? So next time you'll learn, you wait on me and my leadership and my guidance. You wait on my voice next time. Because, um, should I say this right now? I just don't want to forget like my thoughts because I didn't write no notes. <laughs> I only wrote scriptures down. I have found that um, because you have two different mindsets, category one and category two, a lot of believers don't understand seasons. I didn't even understand seasons until this year. Literally, um, God has been teaching me about seasons recently. And um, the way he gave it to me is that there's a prophetic scale in the kingdom. There's a prophetic scale and God has already appointed certain things to happen. Excuse me. There's Christians who already understand this. God's already appointed certain things to happen. You'll find that whenever God does lead you to do something or whenever he leads you to go a certain place, it's something that he's already gone before you and set up and taken care of. The fact that he's come to you with it means that he wants you to go ahead and walk into that now. Or sometimes God may give us a word revealed to us what we're going to be doing or who he wants us to be with. And if you're really immature, you're not really experienced or learned in God's sovereignty and seasons like I was <laughs> with my husband, which I'm going to get into in a few minutes, you will, uh, you'll take on the notion that, oh, okay, this is supposed to happen right now. <laughs> okay. So I got the word just cause you got the word. You think that this is the season and this is supposed to happen right now. So what you'll do is you and your self will will try to act on impulse and force that thing to come into fruition when it's not God's timing yet. And it's going to be a big, hot mess, which actually with my husband, when I got to his house, which was funny, <laughs> because as soon as I got there, the Lord gave me a whole layout of what I was supposed to do. And the first thing he said, I still have it in my folder. 
this is not the season for marriage. I don't know how I completely, <laughs> I didn't forget it. I guess I just kind of like, because at the same time, he was giving me so many revelations about my husband. He would constantly be speaking to me about him and just how I should go about doing certain things. Or And I sincerely thought I was doing the right thing when I was doing this. But I felt that because I was getting so much knowledge or I was getting most of the things from the father and he wasn't, I kind of started to control the relationship. I don't even know what you would call that mess. <laughs> that, that, that The courtship, whatever. I kind of started to control it a little bit, sincerely believing that that's what I was supposed to do just because I was getting the word. But that's why I said um, when, when, when you when you learn about getting a word from God, you also have to learn that with that word comes understanding, get understanding with the word as well. And there's times and seasons with uh, with each different word. Yes. So um, it's not that God can't tell you who your spouse is. It's not that he can't tell you what your future career is going to be or what you're going to be doing ministry wise. But you are going to be doing those things. And this is why I wanted to give y'all that word on season so bad. <laughs> but he told me not to because I'm in Genesis right now. And uh, if you study Abraham's life and how God really worked with Abraham and how he just kind of, you know, <clears throat> the method that he used, you'll, you'll notice that Abraham got a heavy word. He got a lot of promises. It wasn't just one thing. He was promised several things from God. And over time, uh, it seems like when God... Um, when Abraham was approaching the next season, God started revealing a little bit more about what he told him a long time ago. So um, Abraham in his own way had to kind of learn and experience that, okay, I got this word. He probably was always looking for the manifestation of it, but he had to learn through experience that there's a time and a season. And you'll see in Genesis, I'm already giving a part of the message away now. <laughs> I took notes. It's, it's so good. But You'll see that um, every time Abraham was uh, approaching a new season or a different season, God would reveal a little bit more to Abraham. And uh, he finally did end up telling him, this is the land that I'm going to give you and your offspring, but not yet because the, um, the iniquity, I think, was the, of the Amorites is not yet full or the Canaanites. It was one of them. <clears throat> so when I read that, I said, wow, I said, look at that. There definitely is different times and seasons for what God wants to do. So could you imagine if Abraham, just because he got that word, that this was his land. So technically, he can go ahead and receive that by faith because God already told him this is yours. So imagine if he would have tried to pursue that and take it from those people at the wrong time. After God already told him this is not the season, some bad things would have happened. <laughs> okay, let's just say that much. But um. I don't want to get too off track. So, yes, basically, uh, I, from my understanding, what I see with Christians is not only are we still learning God's voice, which is uh, I feel like it's something you really need to, you know, be patient and very careful with as well. It's, it's definitely a skill that needs to be learned amongst every believer. But when you get the word, we don't understand seasons. <laughs> we don't understand like God's timing or even how he operates. So you're still a baby in that sense. You may not be a baby in hearing God's voice, but. You're a baby in the sense of how he operates and you can potentially mess that word up. It's not that you didn't hear God or that he didn't speak to you. You got that part down. But when it comes to how he operates and how he goes into um, how he goes about bringing that to fruition, you can mess that up. If you try to step outside of his will to force it to happen in the wrong season or uh, you're just you're just clearly just just blatantly just not being led by the Holy Spirit, either one. <clears throat> so, um. I learned God's sovereignty in that season with my husband. I, I think, I mean, God's not stupid. Like he knew I didn't know anything about that. He knew that I thought I was doing the right thing. But uh, I clearly learned a lot about God's sovereignty when I was there. I had a lot of, uh, he even had me reading Sovereign God when I was there. <laughs> so it was basically, it was like a learning uh, season for me. Um, and uh, showing me my error. He waited until I got home to do that. He didn't tell me when I was there, Brandy, don't do that. Don't do this. <laughs> she waited till I was gone. So he clearly just wanted to uh, teach me something. But um, back to category one and category two, the faith and the works people. Now, I'm not bashing on the works people. I just want to bring you back to what scripture says. And it's something that every believer needs to take heart to. I mean, there's no scripture in this Bible. And you'll find a lot of Christians talk like that. Oh, you know, well, you know, maybe sometimes, you know, you just have to go out and do it. And maybe God will bless you with it. I've had, I've heard that from sisters. Just go ahead and do it anyway, even though I didn't get a word about it. <laughs> I don't even know if he wants me to work right now, but they'll tell you, just go ahead and do it anyway. You know, just go do it anyway. 
And um, I just want to respectfully say, I don't find anything in scripture that supports that mindset that, that most Christians have. I see where the scripture tells you to not lean into your own understanding, but to acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your paths. It's not you jump ahead of God and hope that he meets you there and hope that it is God. That's that's not faith. I think I think Christians think that's faith. They call it stepping out on faith. Faith to me is walking out on what God told me to do, not me walking out on what he didn't tell me to do. That's two completely different things. And um, <clears throat> I see that in scripture. I see where the Bible says uh, that the sons of God are led by the spirit of God. And uh, once again, it, go go back to your identity and who you are. You're a sheep. Sheep are not smart animals. Sheep are dumb animals. It, it means they cannot really, uh, they can't really reason within themselves. They can't really govern themselves unless they have someone over them. They need a shepherd. So if the shepherd is the one leading the flock, he says, my sheep hear my voice. Well, I, I wouldn't have to hear your voice and know your voice unless I had to follow you and listen to you, right? So that means that every aspect and detail of my life has to be governed by you. It only makes sense that a Christian has to go to God first or whatever they're trying to do in their life. Because technically, it's not even your life anymore. <laughs> it's his, you know. So um, <clears throat> I'll say that category one is definitely works. Uh, works is anti-faith. It's anti-gospel. I don't think any Christian should be uh, acting on works. Your works should follow your faith. Meaning, uh, like when I said you need two, you need both of them. You know, you can't use one without the other. I wouldn't I wouldn't be in category one. I don't want to be that believer that just kind of jumps out and does their own thing. And you are saved. You do have the Holy Spirit. But um, is there some error in that? You know, you, you could potentially mess up your destiny just, just living a life like that. That's not a... I honestly would say that they're, pro they're probably not even properly abiding in Christ. Because <clears throat> uh, you can't really abide successfully and thoroughly unless you are taking heed to God's voice and how he does things. But like I said, we're all still learning. So, um, I just lost my train. Is this what I'm talking about? I need to take notes because I'll be thinking so much stuff. <laughs> it's like, okay, what was I going to say? Let me pause for a second. Pause. Gosh. Okay, I'm going to jump back into it. Yeah, so works is definitely anti-faith in the sense that it is someone because if if the Holy Spirit is the spirit of liberty and he's tied to the faith of the gospel, he's tied to the faith. That's his whole operation. He works with faith. The Holy Spirit does. So if you have a Christian who's not walking by faith, but they're walking by their own will, he's clearly not in that. And I think a lot of Christians don't understand that. I think they think that just because they may uh, walk in that method freely without any real... Um, without any real friction, if you will, or maybe, you know, they're probably used to God intervening with it. They feel like it's okay to walk that way. And it's really not because when you really take that into account, that category one, they, they're more lenient towards works. They're more lenient on my will, my, my time, you know, I'm going to do this and hopefully God will meet me there. You know, just, uh, they believe that they have to open the door for God to kind of come through it sounds like it could be right. And that's the danger. And it sounds like God could operate that way. I'm not saying he can or that he would never do it. I'm sure he's done it on several accounts, but that's not the way. God is a God of order. He doesn't work that way. He gave, he gave you several scriptures of how he does work. He says, I speak, I lead, you hear, you follow. <laughs> that's how it works. You know, it's not God's responsibility to take the back seat in your life and follow you wherever you want to go as a Christian. You follow him. So when it comes to works, uh, you'll find that because the, the Holy Spirit himself is associated with faith, which is category two believers who like to be patient and wait on the word. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all probably got that down by now. Uh, that only lets me know that this is where he's not. So Holy Spirit is over here. This is where he's not. And you will find that a lot of Christians who maneuver and uh, they use this particular method in category one, the faith steppers, they like to rush. They're always hurrying to do it. And like I said, I, this is personal experience for me because when I got that word with my husband, I literally was forcing him to comply with the word <laughs> that I got. I was really like rushing and trying to hurry up and get married, having only known each other for like a month. And I, it's just funny. Please don't laugh. <laughs> But no, I sincerely thought I was doing the right thing because I heard from God. This is what I'm talking about. You can't have one without the other. You can't just hear God's voice and don't have any understanding and know 
kind of perception of seasons and times like that all works together you cannot have just one so um i literally was forcing my husband to do so many things i i thought that if he didn't do it or if something wasn't going um going the way i thought it would go i thought he was being rebellious <laughs> guess god this is so embarrassing oh my god they just it just shows your growth though i, I actually used to think like that I thought he was being rebellious because I couldn't understand, well, this is God's will. Like, he should be down with it, you know? Like, that's what I'm hearing from God, you know? So it doesn't work like that. So you'll find that people who are in category one, it's amazing how they don't see their error in this because they're always rushing. It's like, what's, what is the rush for? He used to tell me that, like, why are you rushing? Like, what is the rush about? And I'd just be like, what is he talking about? This is God's will. <laughs> like, God's will is more important, you know? So that was just my whole thing. But they like to rush. They're always hurrying to do it or they have a um, you'll notice that there's no real peace or contentment or really a stability with category one. It's always about the drive. They're really driven. They're motivated. They just want to go, which is there's nothing wrong with that. But it's just, you know, you do have to submit yourself to God's timing. <laughs> you have to submit yourself to the way he wants to go about bringing that about. You can't always just be so set on how you want to do it when you want to do it. And all you see is just, you know, maybe what he told you, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with laying a hold on what God promised you. But, you know, you can't potentially mess that up if you're if you're blindly walking out this path and stumbling with no real leading or guiding um, guidance of how he told you, to, you know, walk into that. And the only way to walk into God's promises, people, is to follow the Holy Spirit because he's the counselor. I mean, it's just... <laughs> He's the one that navigates the whole thing. It's kind of funny how Christians, like, they, we always try to, like, operate outside of him. Like, it doesn't work that way. He's connected to God. So anything that God told you, he's going to be the one to navigate how to get you there. You know? So it's like, y'all got to work together. You got to submit to him and follow his voice and his lead. He knows where he's taking you. So you got to wait on him. Just wait for him to speak. It's that simple. <laughs> and if he doesn't speak, it's not the season. Like, uh, another perfect example, me and my sister in Christ. <laughs> or my roommate, um, me and her got the word to be roommates earlier this year in February, I think, um, which it was very new for me because I only used to feeling that feeling when it comes to my husband and when God would speak something to me about him. Uh, so I had that feeling with her. So now I'm learning. I'm even learning with that alone. Like, OK, this is the Holy Spirit. So this is a way for me to discern and know when it is God speaking. So me and her definitely got the word to be roommates way in February, like it's November now. <laughs> so um, me and her both still learning. We were thinking, okay, well, maybe we should do it now, you know? So me and her, we went on a fast and uh, y'all remember that video, we were fasting and stuff. And uh, we were just seeking God on when, when to do it, the finances and stuff. And he didn't tell us anything. <laughs> like, and he, he answered some stuff that I was praying about. But yeah, me and her did our own little individual fast and we came to him about it several times, like, you know, within that little time frame that we fasted and he didn't tell us anything. So at the time, like, obviously we're still learning, you know, how he operates. Once again, every Christian has to learn that there's nothing wrong with that. But um, I guess we just kind of like kind of threw it off or was like, well, me and her were talking about it a few months later, like, well, maybe I don't know what that was. <laughs> so I was like, I know I heard from God. Like, I know we both heard, you know, to be roommates. So why didn't he? He didn't really expound on it as a thing. He just basically said, y'all are going to be roommates. That's basically what we felt. We we're going to be living together. And it was so, it was so like immature to the point where I thought I was going to be in New York with her because she's in New York right now. <laughs> so we didn't know it was going to be LA or anything. So um, I also want to point out what I've learned from that is even reading Genesis with Abraham's situation, I took these notes down. So this is how you need to learn how God operates that when the season is approaching, he starts to reveal a little bit more. He's not obligated to tell you more than what you need to know. Like at that point, he just wants us to know this is going to be your roommate. He gave me a dream about uh, working with her last year. <laughs> uh, last year in October, I had the dream. So he already gave me the dream. Okay, so we got the dream. Then we got the word to be roommates, which you would consider confirmation in a sense. And um. I guess he just didn't really, it just wasn't the season. I guess that's why he didn't want to give us any more work because maybe he felt that if he did, we would have tried to act on it. So he'll even intervene and protect you, <laughs> protect you in that sense. God's not, not going to give you so much to where you can potentially mess it up and act on it. If you truly are a Christian that likes to be led by the Holy Spirit and you respect that aspect of him, he knows that that could serve as a protection for you. 
well, I'm not really giving them anything more than what I told them. So they're not going to really try to act and try to, you know, which is a good thing. <laughs> so it just wasn't the right season. Uh, we pay, He basically just wanted us to have the knowledge of what it was. And now that, you know, the season is approaching, he gives a little bit more detail. But, uh, yeah, Category 1, I've, I've noticed there's a lot of um, ambition, a lot of motivation, a lot of stirring. Not so much peace, not so much contentment, and not so much rest, which would make sense because it's works-based. They can't have any rest. You're not going to have rest being anti-faith. You're under the impression that stepping out is faith, but that's not faith. Faith is stepping out on what God told you to do, not what you're assuming God may want you to do or what you want to do, hoping that God is going to accompany you in that. That's too many. That's two different things. Now, let's jump to category two, the resters. The faith-based people. <laughs> faith-based, like I said, how I would describe it or define it, because I am on that, I'm in that category of, of Christians, is um, like I said, if God didn't say it, he didn't lead me to do it. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna move. Like it's that simple. Like, um, um it's two, it's two completely different mindsets with category one and category two. Category one may feel like uh you don't have to be led with everything. Or, uh, well, sometimes you just got to move first and then God will follow you. Whereas category two is like, well, no, it's, it's, you know what it is? Category one, because they're not faith based and the Holy Spirit is not accompanying that method and that mindset, because category one is not the mind of Christ. It's not, they think, they think it is, but it's not. And because it's not the mind of Christ, they don't have the vision of God's sovereignty. That's why they can't rest. That's why they're always like, trying to hurry it up and trying to rush the word or trying to hurry up and move into it. And like there is a lot of fear, a lot of concern with different things. And um, <laughs> like I said, it's um, that's not putting anybody down. It's just showing other Christians their ear if you are operating that way. It only makes sense that God is not in that method. The Christian, his child is in that method. It doesn't stop you from being a Christian, but that's not that's not the Holy Spirit's operation. The Holy Spirit is literally the founder of faith, the gospel. Walking by faith, that's him. He's over here. He's literally over here with the leading and the guiding and the speaking part. That's the Holy Spirit. The other part, like I said, they don't like to be led. Not that they don't like to be led. They don't wait to be led. They don't wait to hear the word first. They don't wait for the confirmation. They just get up and they move, you know. Um, <clears throat> you know, they, they may use scriptures to support that. Well, Abraham did. Abraham did not do that. Abraham heard the word first and then he moved. <laughs> Abraham was in category two. He was always led by the spirit of God. So um, you'll find that category one believers and category two, they're never really in agreement because they have two completely different mindsets. One is aware of God's sovereignty and one is not. That's why they can't understand you when you say, well, I just want to pray about it first. Well, let me, you know, I'm, I'm not led to do it right now, you know? And this, this, this is a, another example. The guy I had a second word of marriage with, I got the word that he was my husband. For some reason, God always tells one person more stuff than he does. The other. That's scriptural too. He did that with Sarah and Abraham. You'll find that uh, Abraham, it seemed like he was the one who was the most uh, intimate with God. So God was always telling Abraham what he was going to do, but he would never tell Sarah. And you would think, well, why wouldn't God tell Sarah that too? She's Abraham's wife, right? Well, why wouldn't Abraham share that with her? That's another thing. I cannot freaking say it. Oh, I just want to say it so bad. But uh, no, if you pay attention, when uh, Jesus and the two angels came to uh, to sup with Abraham, you know, he cooked the meal for them and everything. Uh, Jesus actually confirmed again because he said it uh, previously before in another passage. But now he said it again that um, at this time <clears throat> or at this date in the next season or the next year, Sarah is going to give birth to Isaac, you know, a child. She overheard it and she laughed. So it kind of gives off the impression that that's not the first time God said that. God told Abraham that like. A long time ago so the fact that she didn't know lets us know that god doesn't always share everything with both individuals who were involved in that uh in that particular issue he may just be given all the knowledge and the, the revelation to the one person so um <clears throat> and that's that could be for several reasons maybe uh sarah just probably wasn't as intimate uh with god as um as Abraham was considering, you know, she wasn't necessarily the one walking with him. You see Abraham being that character. He's the founder of the faith. She was just kind of like a, she's a wife. She's, she's an heir of it, but she's not really, you know, 
So it could have been for that reason. Maybe if she did know, you can clearly see how Sarah operates already when it comes to her logic and her reasoning. She <laughs> told him to go have sex with her with her uh, slave. So it, it's probably a lot of reasons. God knows how we all are. It's probably several reasons why he doesn't tell both people the same thing that he may be giving the one. You know, she could have messed that up too if he was to tell her that. I really don't know. But um, so it does show that God, um, he does do that. He may not always, uh, y'all may have the same word and be, uh, be a part of the same promise, but he's not always going to tell the other what he's telling you. And because he is doing it that way with you, it's important that you learn seasons. Now, with the guy that I was telling you about, the guy had a second word of marriage where God told me he was my husband. And um, I do feel that he felt in his spirit that he knew I was his wife because he said it. <laughs> he was making plans to come to Texas and see me and everything. So it's not that he didn't bear witness to it. I think what it was that God, um, maybe because I just have the gift, the word of knowledge, I really don't know. He would pour into me a lot. He always does that more than he does the guy. So, and I was a lot more immature in 2013. So you can only imagine how I handled that. <laughs> I had so much pressure on that guy. I forced him so much. And he was a man of God. And he would just tell me, well, I don't really feel led to do it right now. And how I processed that was because I wasn't in category two. I wasn't faith-based. I didn't have the mind of Christ. I processed that as, well, how does he not know it's God's will? What does he mean he's not led? You know, if I know and God told me, shouldn't he know as well? You know, so it was just a lot of confusion when really all that meant was he's your husband, but it's not the season. There's a reason why God didn't share with him or tell him what he told you. It's not the season yet. I didn't know that at the time. <laughs> I know now, so... But just another example, you know, so God does operate that way. That's something for y'all to jot down and take into consideration as well. So back to category one and category two, the faith steppers, the works, the flesh, basically. It really is just self-will. Call it what it is. It's self-will. But um, it could be under the guise of faith. It's not real faith. If you read the scripture, you clearly see that's not faith. <laughs> that's just that's just flesh. That's a self-will. And um. The reason why those two Christians cannot really, um, they're not in agreement that they really understand each other is because one has the mind of Christ and one doesn't. Category two has the mind of Christ because they understand God's sovereignty and they rest in that. Whereas in category one's eyes, it may look like, okay, well, they say God, 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 you know, they want to want to wait on God's leading and God's this. Well, sometimes you have to be, you know, you have to do something too. That's how they talk. Well, you have to do something too. And it's like, it's not that I'm not down for doing something. I'm just not going to do it unless I'm told. <laughs> it's very simple, you know? So, um, and neither one means any harm, but you'll see the danger in, um, uh, the danger in just having two mindsets like that. That's a problem. It's a problem when you have the body of Christ using these two different methods, but yet the word tells you to be like-minded. And that's what I'm about to go to in Philippians chapter two, verse two. <clears throat> it's a lot of scriptures that tell us to be like-minded. It's amazing how we can read this and we, we don't even practice or carry this out in any way, shape or form. Philippians. Philippians chapter two, verse two. He says, fulfill you, my joy, that you be like minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. So he even said it like three times, just in a different way. Fulfill you, my joy, that you be like minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind, like minded, one accord, one mind, not two minds, one mind. That's very serious. That's very, very important. You do not see that in the body of Christ today. How many Christians have you fellowship with where y'all each had a disagreement over scripture? Something that's very clear <laughs> or a disagreement on how to um, just how to go about doing certain things in the church, maybe. Why is it that Christians don't have the same mind what he's really telling you about he's not telling you to be in agreement or in harmony with e with each other's opinions he's telling you y'all should all be subject to the mind of christ so if somebody if there's one or two or ten christians that don't have that something is wrong why is it that there are christians who are not under the mind of christ it's because they don't understand god's sovereignty 
which is why I really pressed, I really pressed that book Sovereign God by David Eels a lot. That's what he's talking about. Category two people. Not only is it wisdom, it's going to be all the right things. I could name so many things that category two believers are, but that's because they're bearing the right fruit. Patience, wisdom. It's wise for you to wait until God speaks to you and confirms that word to you first. It's important. And uh, it's patience. It's patience because you are waiting for God to speak to you. Whereas a category one, there really is no wisdom in just jumping up and doing something just because you got the word. It's not wisdom. And number two is it's certainly not patience because they're always trying to hurry and try to rush it or bring that word into fruition outside of God's timing. You know, so what category two has uh, as the mind of Christ is understanding God's sovereignty, which is understanding that whatever God tells me to do or wherever he leads me to go, he has already gone before me and appointed that and set that up for me. And by the time the word comes to me and the confirmation to move on it, it's the season now. I can walk into that by the Holy, via the Holy Spirit's voice. That's what that means. Category two Christians understand God's sovereignty. I don't have to be weary and fearful of what's going to happen and how things are going to come about. And is it safe here? You know, or is this is I don't have, especially if I prayed about it. It's just something that this, it should just naturally come as an understanding with Christians. And it's sad that a lot of Christians don't have that. Uh, I think Christians really need to spend some time getting to know God from a sovereign aspect. It's great to know his voice. That's very important. <laughs> but you need to know his sovereignty in order to learn how he operates. Um, category one may feel like they're on a they're on a crunch for time. Got to hurry up and got to do it now. Uh, category two, actually, no, God's not limited by time. God created time. And I understand that when it's time for me to go there or um, if that word is true, he's going to confirm that to me in his timing. There's a season for everything. And when that season is approaching itself, the Holy Spirit is responsible and faithful to reveal that to me personally. You don't need another believer to force nothing on you, to pressure you to do anything. If they're doing that, they may sincerely just not, they may mean no harm at all. They just need to learn like we all do. But if you find a believer is forcing you to do something or really pressuring you or trying to press you, I can promise you that it's not the Spirit of God. Doesn't mean they're anti-Christ. <laughs> they're not anti-Christ. It just means that that's how you can discern, okay, I know the fruit of the Holy Spirit. This is not it. So they're not being led. They're probably just being led based off their fears, maybe, or maybe just, just impulse or just flesh or just a uh, man's wisdom and logic. So it's your responsibility not to yield or subject yourself to that. If you can correct them on it, just make sure you do so in love. But that's what I'm talking about. Christians under the mind of Christ, they understand they rest because they understand God's sovereignty over everything that he does reveal to you. That's where I'm going. Cool. All right. When it's time for God to open the door, he's going to do it. You know, when it's time for him, he wants me to get up and move. It's nothing for him to shoot me a dream, shoot somebody, you know, have somebody come to me, give me the word, send another one to give me another word. That's confirmation. Bam. Okay. I act on it. It's simple. Like God's not limited. <laughs> like it's not. Oh my God, if we don't move now, if we don't do it now, we're going to mess up the promise. Like you're not going to mess up anything. God's not falling off of his throne. You're his child. You know, it's, it's nothing for him to, to let you know. Like, like, uh, for example, how, um, he told me to start writing this book. <laughs> he even used my mama to tell me, Brandy, do you ever think about writing books? I knew it was him. <laughs> he's like, he'll do stuff like that. Like, you know, when he's trying to get your attention, that's why I say it's nothing for him to do. So if he really wants you to move and do something, or he really wants you to know something, it's more than easy for God to communicate that to you. And if he's not doing that, don't move. It's that simple. There's nothing wrong with you not moving. Um, it's error to do the opposite. Okay. God's not limited to how he can communicate to you if he wants you to do something. So, and I just kind of rolled my eyes <laughs> when she said it, because I knew it was him. And then right after she, when I, right after she said that, and I think I kind of responded to her, I was like, yeah, I said, he's, he's been telling me to, to start writing the book. And uh, she was like, well, you ever thought of, you know, just taking the stuff that you have written and just building upon? I'm just like, oh my God, that's exactly what I was going to do. <laughs> so she doesn't know anything about that. So you see, God can even use a vessel of dishonor to, to speak to you. So it's not hard for him to get through to you. If he really wanted to get through to you, it's nothing to him. So that's his way of impressing upon me. Brandy, write the book, start writing, start writing. So 
if he can do that with that, he can do that with anything else he wants me to do. He can do that with you. Anything he wants you to do or tell you to do. Don't do not ever in your ever ever life <laughs> be led by somebody else's leading. Just because you're a Christian, Christians can be an error too. That's all I'm saying. Christians can be an error as well. We're all still learning. Your head is Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, not another Christian. Whatever word they're carrying or whatever word they deliver to you, hold on to it. Pray about it. God's not deaf. He's not ignoring you. He hears you as soon as you speak to him. If he doesn't respond to you right away, there's a reason. That doesn't mean that you act on impulse because he's not speaking soon enough. That's a problem. You wait for God to speak. There's a reason why he has not spoken or um, elaborated on that particular thing yet. <sighs> so, yes, category two, they have the mind of Christ. We understand God's sovereignty. I understand that he's already gone before me. So when it's time for me to walk into that, not only is he going to impress that upon me in my spirit, but the door is going to be open and he's going to tell me which door it is. But if I don't have any peace about that and I'm still I'm still in a state where I don't really know, I feel like I can't see, I don't know which door it is, and I feel compelled to just jump and jump through any door, yeah, that's not God. That's not God. Especially when it comes to his prophetic timeline. <laughs> Trust me, he already got this stuff mapped out. When it comes to you, it's, 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 it's already been like the whole store is already, this is the opening of the store by the time he get it to you. <laughs> okay, so that's really how you need to see it. There literally is like a prophetic timeline. Just try to see God going in the future, setting different things up and planning it, you know, and uh, you can see them as different doors if you want to, but they're in, they're in the, they're in different time frames as well. It's like time frame one, time frame two, or season one, phase one for season one, phase two for season one, phase three for season one. Okay. The word is still the same. The word has not changed, but God is a God of order and he has a pro 